Hello, I'm Grim Griddle, and welcome back to A Builder's Guide to Nuts and Bolts. And for those of you who don't know what A Builder's Guide to Nuts and Bolts is, which is understandable as it's been just over six months since the last video, it's a Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts tutorial series that focuses more on exploits and how to harness them, rather than just building replicas. And because the series is more focused on game mechanics and reliant on glitches and exploits, it's somewhat sporadically updated as I can only make a new video when a new exploit is discovered. And more often than not these exploits are not discovered by me, but instead other people who are kind enough to let me know about it, which is very much the case for this exploit that was made known to me by Clayton Carmine, who linked me a video of them playing around with it, so major thanks to them and I have a link to their original video in the description below. And so windsurfing, which is what I'm calling this exploit, as well that's basically what it is. As always for the Builder's Guide to Nuts and Bolts, I try to boil down the example vehicle to its most basic possible form while still being able to achieve the glitch, both because this allows me to more easily demonstrate how to do it and also explore why it actually works. And for the windsurfer, this here, what you're seeing right now on the screen, would definitely be its most basic form. Firstly, it has to have the regular functionality of some sort of aeroplane, which means it's got to have regular wings and some form of propulsion. For the purposes of this video, I'm mainly using just a small propeller and small engine, or just a small jet, but I have tested with the hyperdrive and also the spring engine, and it does seem to work with them, even when there's absolutely no means of traditional non-exploitative glitch-based propulsion attached to the vehicle, which I was surprised at, because at first, I did think, as Clayton had suggested, that this was due to partly the way propellers interact with the game, but it does seem now that that's not actually the case. So, as I said, the first part of the vehicle required, which is the part here represented in blue, is a traditional aeroplane style vehicle, with regular wings and some form of propulsion. And then represented in red is the unusual part, which allows for the exploit to be used. It is, rather simply, two folding wings facing backwards. Now, they can face forward, in fact, indeed, that's what Clayton uses in his video, though, as I played around with it, it seems to work at least a little bit better when facing backwards. And that's really all you need. In order to activate the exploit, just fly around like you would regularly, and then unfold the folding wings, and it will give you a rather large boost in the direction of which the top of your folding wings are facing. Now, I've played around with it a fair bit, and I think i found the limitations to it, and think I've started to figure out why it's working, so let's break that down and first begin with the limitations. It does seem that the wings only work when they're laying flat and facing backwards or forwards, so unfortunately you can't have them standing upwards, which is kind of disappointing because as I said, it only propels you in the direction that the top of your folding wings are facing, and so if you want to use it to boost your vehicle forward, you're going to have to do a bit of a nosedive and angle your vehicle as such. Because of this, it's not hugely practical for most challenges, as controlling your vehicle while also maintaining a nosedive in the direction you want to go is very difficult. So consider this exploit to be more like your hyperdrive or remote control glitch, where it's a lot of fun, but it's not going to get you that many jiggies. I did try to change the folding wings orientation while post garage like is necessary for the spring engine or the forward facing turbine engine, but it seems it made no difference. That's not to say you yourself shouldn't play around with it, it's just to say that I was unable to achieve it. And the other thing I found is that the faster your vehicle is moving in one direction, the more dramatic the effect of opening the folding wing seems to be. This is why I call it windsurfing, and where we start to go into the speculation territory. It seems to me likely that the reason this exploit takes place is when you open the folding wings going fast in one direction, the game seems to realize that the physics of the wings being where they are placed on a vehicle going so fast in one particular direction doesn't really make a great deal of sense and it so tries to dramatically overcorrect it. This is why I've chosen to call it windsurfing because it seems to be that your vehicle is going so very fast in one direction without getting affected by the yet existent aerodynamics of a folding wing only for you to suddenly open the folding wings, throwing in that contradictory aerodynamics into the equation, which essentially makes it look like you suddenly get hit by a gust of wind and blown dramatically off course. And so the windsurfing exploit in Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. I definitely suggest that you check it out and maybe try playing around with it, as there seems to be a lot of potential when it comes to glitches and exploits involving the folding wing. It's both a necessary requirement in this exploit and also the turbine engine, so it definitely seems like when you're applying outside forces to the folding wing, well, the game really doesn't know how to deal with it, and it can be a lot of fun. 
But with all of that said and done, thanks for watching, and until next time, I have been and still am Grim Grindle. If this is your first time watching a, a Builder's Guide to Nuts and Bolts video, check out the a Builder's Guide to Nuts and Bolts playlist as there's plenty more tutorials for plenty more glitches. And once again, a major thanks to Clayton Carmine for making me aware of this. The link to his original video is in the description below. And of course, finally, if you would like to follow me on social media, a link to my Twitter is in the description below. And a link to the Channel Grim and Grim Discord, the Echo Chamber, is also available.